Hello YouTube, it is Toy Adventures here again with another figure review. Actually today, it is two figures. Today we're taking a look at the brand new Hammond Collection, Ellie Sattler, and the Hammond Collection, Alophosaurus. Yes, we're going to combine these two into one review since they are both so minuscule. I can kind of get away with one long review, that way you guys don't have to, you know, wait for another one and, you know... Me maybe not making it on time. This way, we get the nice reviews out first. So, as you guys know, we have previously only gotten a uh, Amber Collection Dilophosaurus that was, you know, halfway decent in this Mattel line. And now we have the Amber one. I'm not counting all the mainline ones. Those ones are pretty bad. Just like the Packy, it's, it's like, if it's not the Hammer Collection, Mattel has done it pretty dirty. Then again, the whole franchise has done this guy pretty dirty. Anyway, so now we finally have a, what would, they would call a proper in-scale uh, Dilophosaurus. I personally still like to use the Ham Collection one more because it's bigger, and the Dilophosaurus should be bigger. But this is nice for those who like the movie accuracy, and it's still just a cool figure in general. And then, of course, joining the super articulated Hammond line is Ellie Sattler with some interesting accessories. We'll get onto that for sure in a bit. But taking a look at the packaging, it is very standard for the small uh, single-carded figs and dinosaurs. So you have a nice little picture of uh, the dinosaur on the back. It says, at first appearing unassuming and curious, the Dilophosaurus is severely misjudged by Dennis Nedry and ends up dealing or derailing his nefarious plot to escape after showing little interest in playing fetch. Yes, yes. Stick, stupid. You want the stick? No, he didn't want the stick. Anyway, looking at Ellie Sattler, uh, interesting pair of hands and a leaf. Thrilling. Taking a look at the back, we have, after encountering a sick Triceratops on the Jurassic Park tour, Dr. Ellie Sattler takes a tenacious approach and digs deep to determine what is ailing the distressed dinosaur. Digs deep, very deep, why was this made into a toy? So I'm really hoping now that I've read that uh, back that these are just scene specific toys. So we're getting the really gross scene where she has to put a full length glove and goes right to town on some fecal matter. That is one big pile of sh yeah, There's been a lot of fandom talk over this accessory and uh, it's a bit of a shitty accessory. Pardon the pun. Um, I think we all could have thought of a million different things that would have been better accessories. Maybe a, a raincoat, the flashlight, you know. Maybe a different, maybe the ability to take off or uh, bare arms so you can take off her, her sweater or her shirt and have her like she was at the end of the movie with just the blue uh, tank top underneath. I mean, so many good ideas for better accessories and I think Mattel really uh, chose the shittiest of all options i'm sorry i'm sorry i'll stop the shit jokes write themselves anyway taking a look here at the dilophosaurus of course nothing here was made as a mistake i think the only thing they could have possibly included to make this even more amazing is a stick <laughs> or the uh or the can you know something to reference the scene but of course that is not needed at all and this on its own is perfectly fine and i really like it so there's something about this really compact packaging is makes it a very attractive, more so than the Raptor, I guess. It's the frill. You know, the frill, it's colorful. I don't know what it is about this. Maybe you guys can agree with me, but this just looks appealing. And if I saw this on the shelf, I'd be tempted to buy it just again, just because it looks so appealing. I don't know what it is about it. I just, uh, I'm a simple man. I see a cool dinosaur in a cool box. I want it. Doesn't matter if I have it, I want it. And surprise, they're all out of the box. And here they are. So, after a long drive all the way to Oceanside to pick these guys up, uh, yep, Target is the spot, of course, is where you're going to want to find these guys. Now, they're brand, brand new, guys, so don't expect to just walk into any Target and see them there. Uh, you might need to look around a bit. I mean, you might get lucky. You might. But it's unlikely because of just how new they are. Like, I just saw people finding these in stores about a couple, maybe two days ago, maybe one day ago. And, uh, you know, we went out starting to look and uh, we just happened to get really lucky. So, uh, 
Target is the spot. I know you guys like to ask a lot. Target is the spot for these guys. And, uh, you know, we gave them the DPCI number. I will have both of the numbers for these guys in the description below. So you take those numbers, you can put it into a website like BrickSeek or PopFinder. And that's one way to see what targets in stock around you have it. Uh, obviously, you pick like Target Inventory Stock Checker and you do that. Or you could just go to Target, give it to, I guess, one of the guys with the little computer that has like the stock info, or maybe even just go to the electronics department and give it to them. And they can either tell you if your, their store has it or which stores in the vicinity have it. That way, maybe finding this thing won't be such a wild goose chase for you guys. All right, so that out of the way, let's get straight onto these figures, starting off with, of course, the dinosaur, the Lothosaurus. So this is our second super detailed and articulated variation of this dinosaur, which is not a complaint at all. Uh, this is one dinosaur that really hasn't gotten a lot of justice in the fandom. So the fact that it already has its Hammond collection uh, is really nice. You know, you can tell Mattel really feels bad for this guy and just wants... They know the fandom loves him and wants more of him. So I'm glad that we already have our little spitter. Because, I mean, just look at him. He's so great. And I will be comparing him to a few others. I, I have to go looking for my Amber Collection one. But I will certainly try. Uh, so, yeah. Let's just take a look at him, shall we? Starting off with the head. I mean, we saw the frill on the... Sorry, I keep thinking it's cameras where it's not. I don't know why. So we all remember the gimmick on the... Uh, what is it? Hammond Collect... No, Amber Collection, the Lophosaurus. You pull off the uh, frill, you pull off the head, and then you can uh, plug the frill on. With this one, you don't need to pull off the head at all. It is just like the old electronic spitter, or I guess it would just be called the Dilophosaurus. The rubber one was called the spitter. Uh, it's just like, yeah, a little rubber frill, which means you can, theoretically, maybe it might take some um, modifications, put this on really any Dilophosaurus toy, like the Kenner one, which is the one I was thinking of. You may need to shorten the little hole in there, but you could theoretically put this on the Kenner Dilophosaurus. I'll try it in a bit, but yeah, that's really nice. That means you don't have to worry about losing the head joint or the head if it pops off. Because I remember the Dilophosaurus one popped off a little easy. This one, no. And the uh, head itself is nice and thick right here. So when you put it on there, it is nice and stationary. Put it right there. And yeah, see? Perfectly fine. Looks great. The paint detailing on that is fantastic. It looks so good. Oh, I love it. When Rattel wants to do good, they can really do some good work. Let's just take a look at this frill on its own. Come on, focus. There we go. Just a beautiful pattern. Absolutely killed it, even at this scale. And when you want it to have no frill, as easy as just plugging this on. I really hope I don't have it the wrong way. I am not entirely sure which way it is supposed to go because they don't put a picture of it on the box and I don't remember if the red part's supposed to be down or up. I know you guys are screaming at me right now. I, I'm i screaming at me too. I think it goes like this because this is how it fits the best. So I'm assuming it's like this. If it's not, I understand if you guys persecute me and uh, hang me and burn me at the stake. I understand. I get it. Um... So, yeah, just look at this little guy. Uh, nothing too crazy, scoped-wise. Pretty standard di uh, Mattel dinosaur. Just really nice. You can kind of see, like, the little rib cage that you, you'd see, like, on those old animatronics. They used to breathe really fast. Totally reminds me of that. The, uh, the feet, unfortunately, are pretty big and blocky. That is standard for Hammond Collection. They equate big feet to standing well. They do not understand the art of, you know balance if these creatures could stand in real life there's a way to get a toy of them to stand okay and it's not big old stompers now moving on to articulation for this little dude because we already know that the detail on him is superb the eye printing is on the money if i could just get the light right there because i know mattel's eyes aren't the best when they get messed up but that just looks super clean Super precise. Other side. 
Hell yeah, that looks amazing. Really good. The mouth is a little stiff, and the way the articula... Oh, no, it was just stiff articulation, my bad. Uh, yeah, you can still get great poses with the neck. Now, obviously, there's not as much articulation in this guy as there was in the Amber collection. It's a smaller dinosaur. Mm, I've seen companies do it, mainly like, uh, that's more of like a, I've seen Japanese companies who can do like super small figures and then have them still have the articulation of bigger figures. Not so much Mattel, that's a little out of their field, but I, I'll, I'll forgive him, it's no big deal. Wrist articulation on this guy is not going to kill it. It was going to kill me on the Raptor, but on this specific dinosaur, this articulation is perfectly uh, suitable for what you're going to do or play with or pose. You know, for this dinosaur, this is, this is perfect. He didn't do too much. He just kind of stood there and looked at Dennis Nedry like the idiot he was. And uh, so, yeah, he'll do that just fine with some added extra posing. Now, speaking of posing, getting on to articulation for this little lad. Starting up here at the head, of course, the jaw, as you saw, is on a hinge, looking pretty good. Then the base of the head neck right here is on a hinge and rotation, so you can look down. I'm going to take off the neck frill just for e uh, ease of articulation. The head can look down about that far, so you can have him stepping on prey and looking down for that final kill shot. And then he can lift his head up about that far when you're trying to throw a stick for him to be interested in and he just can't be bothered. And then down here at the base of the neck, you have another rotation and hinge. So you get a full, oh yeah, I forgot to show the rotation at the base, at the base of the head. So there that is. But here you also get a full rotation at the neck itself. You can move up about that far. You can go down that far. After, I mean, look, he can kind of like do that little thing where he cleans himself, he cleans his little claws, you know. So really great posing opportunities in this little guy. This is just so much fun. Uh, going down here to the arms, already uh, there's so much expression in this little man. And uh, the arms, of course, have the rotation and hinge. That is pretty standard for the uh, Mattel Ammon Collection line is the rotation and hinge. Uh, it does very serviceable articulation. Uh, and then you have another one at the elbow. This one looks a little bit more fragile, so I would be careful with this one, but you do have a full rotation. It can hinge down about that far, almost making the arm straight, and then it can hinge up about that far. So plenty of articulation there in the arms, of course. Again, no wrist, but it's okay. These guys are a little smaller, and this one, this dinosaur, specifically this dinosaur, doesn't need a lot of wrist articulation. The Raptors did, and the Gallimimus, and yeah, the Gallimimus was fine too. It, did, it didn't need it. Moving down here to the legs, there are full rotation here at the thigh. Moving down here to the knee, of course, rotation and hinge. So he moves in about that far. You get to move out about that far and you can rotate it fully. And of course, guess what's on the foot? Yep, rotation and hinge. You can move it down about that far for those cool running poses and you can get it about there for those landing poses so very cool very serviceable articulation and really any interesting or cool pose you could possibly really want to pull off with this dinosaur is going to be more than possible with this figure uh, dilophosaurus fans rejoice and really we should all be dilophosaurus fans right there should be no reason nobody here is a dilophosaurus fan okay okay getting that out of the way this is a superb figure. I give it a... Hmm, I'm going to go with an, a 9 out of 10. For what it's supposed to be, this is pretty much perfect. Um, I can't really think of too many actual complaints I have with it that aren't standard Mattel complaints. Like, nothing about this figure specifically is bad. That this figure introduces, nothing about it is bad. This is pretty much... If, if, if the Raptor is going to be the standard of the Mattel line, this is a perfect entry. Clear cut, dry, easily added um, accessories. I can imagine maybe this might chip the paint on custom builds uh, or custom paint jobs. This could chip the paint, trying to add this and take it off and on. That is the only complaint really, and it could do that for the actual figure after a lot of use. So that's really something that someone who's playing with this is going to be worried about. And if you're playing with it, you're not really worried about its display, you know, look. 
you just want a cool toy and that is going to be this in spades so really whatever you want this thing can do from a you know whatever you want from a little dilophosaurus toy this thing can achieve perfectly fine and i just love it so this is a good nine out of ten now let's take a look at ellie sattler now ellie sattler is um we had ian allen i believe this is our third of the uh, hammond collection humans and these are really what um are special about this line is that now we're finally getting a redo of those old figures and those old figures weren't bad and you know for their limited articulation they, they were they were not bad but these are just better so i'm not going to be complaining about these coming out i'm actually very happy even if they are looking the identical same you know design wise as the old figures which this one does that's fine that's just how they looked in the movies but i would have you know i like the um the new ray arnold that just got uh, released or unveiled where you can have him with the trench coat or, or without. So it's like you have different display options and that's what makes him special from the Comic-Con version. Whereas this one doesn't have the raincoat, it doesn't have the alternate looks, it's just the Ellie Sattler that we got in the other line, more articulations, a leaf, and shit hands. So this one's not a super exciting release. I can imagine people aren't like dying to get this one. Of course they need to get it because it's Elliot and they need to fit, uh, fill out the uh, your articulated cast. But like, uh, they really could have made this a more exciting release. So, taking a look at Ellie herself, this is what we got with the original figure. It is the pink uh, blouse with the little knot at the bottom and the blue tank top underneath, her shorts, her boots, her standard look, which is perfectly fair. Not a complaint at all that she looks like this. This is how she should look, but just, you know, I wish there was alternate look options. And, uh, but for what she is, she looks really good. The face is certainly better than the other, uh, release, but that is going to be a given, but it's not like hot toys level, but it is an improvement. The face sculpt definitely looks a lot better. It definitely looks a lot more feminine. I can tell you that much. The other ones were just kind of like globulous monsters, but the real selling this thing, uh, the really selling point of this thing is the articulation, of course, because looks wise, it's just a more high def movie accurate version of the original figure. And we will take a look at those when we get to comparisons, but for now, it's her turn and then we're going to do articulation and I will point out which joints were on the original figure and which are brand new for Hammond collection for those of you who are new here. So the ball joint at the head, we know this, this was on the other figure too. Not too much movement in this. You're going to be able to move it mainly left to right, but up and down, you're really not going to get too much at all, but left to right, you know, full 360. So you're going to get what you need. The arms, this is the same as the old figure. They hinge out just about there. They don't go quite down parallel with their body, but they do rotate 360 degrees. Moving on to the elbow. Again, this is something that we still saw in the older figure. It can hinge about there. Really bad hinging because of her shirt mold. Uh, I really think they could have done a lot better on that. It just really gets in the way. And it's one of those things where it's like, did they even test this figure? You know, or they just throw it together and say, okay, it meets the standards, go. And, uh, yeah, that's what I feel like sometimes. <laughs> they just, like, they just follow the, the structure of the other figures, insert this character, keep all the other features the same, even if it hinders the figure somehow, and just ship it. So, a little bit of a bummer on that arm. Let's try the other arm. Maybe the arms are different. Yeah, see, this one definitely gets a lot more bending in there than this one can. I can demonstrate that, as you can see. They are not bent to the same. This one I got a little bit better, but it's not that great. And I could have done with a lot more of the elbow bend. Now for the new joints is the wrist. You have a hinge that helps it move up that far and move down that far. And of course a full rotation. Now wrist articulation may seem really like minute, but it's actually game changing for these figures because now they can hold guns. Now they can hold accessories with a little more flair and they can you know, hold two handed objects that need both hands like this or something. Whereas the other ones that you really couldn't do that. So really nice. That is pretty much the selling point for me is the wrist articulation because that is what I wanted. That is the only joint that I was really missing on the old figures was the wrist. And uh, going down here to the uh, knees, or the, uh, the thighs, I mean, 
they can rotate out or they can hinge out really far so you can get her to do the splits and uh, they kick out perfectly far about a 90 degree angle with the rest of her body you can move back a bit you have actually double jointed knees and they're really they're done really nicely like when i was looking at this like in the picture in the box i was like oh there are legs not articulated because they look like one solid piece but no they are definitely articulated with a double jointed knee bend Superb. Of course, that is standard for this line, and that is new. That was not on the other figure. It was just a stand. It was just a single jointed knee bend, but they definitely ramped it up. And the other one had like this weird like meat shield. It, it was hard to explain the way they did the joints back then. But it was like there'd be like a piece of flesh overhanging on the knee to hide the joint, and it looked so much more weird than this. This just looks like a standard action figure fare. So definitely, definitely an improvement. And then actually we do have feet articulation. Now it's it's really well hidden with the boot. Um, it goes down about that far and moves up about that far. So for the arms, yes, for the arms, we have to do the arms now. She comes with a alternate set of arms that are based on the scene, the very brief scene that has no action that no one really cared about, you know, reenacting. No one really cared about this scene. We, there was an infinite more Ellie scenes that were so much more uh, action-packed and awesome and what we wanted to see. And so they said, oh, that's good. That's, 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 that's cool. Poop hands. So we sure got the... Uh, I can't keep doing this. I have to do it one more time. We got the real shit end of the deal here. And uh, it shows... There's no hiding what these are. These are poop hands. And they are vile. And I will never be having her displayed with these. These may be the most throwawayable accessories in human existence. Maybe you could repaint them to be like just gloves in general, but mm, Mattel, you really dropped the ball here. The leaf, I like the leaf more than the alternate arms. The alternate look option is dwarfed by the stupid accessory that you can go outside and pick off a bush. And I still prefer it because it, it at least it's not just downright revolting. Poop arms. This should have been a Comic-Con exclusive. That comes with like a special Triceratops. There, you have that scene. You know, not the mainline release that everyone wants to buy that kids are going to have access to. Come on, Mattel. That one's, that's, that's a rookie move. That's a rookie move. That is unexplainable. And um, it's just like boneheadery. That, that's a knucklehead move. That's a neck. You're getting necked, Mattel. Just a, a blatant bad decision. Now, enough harping over that. We get it. It's beating into the horse. Shitty accessories. I can't keep doing this. And, uh, well, this is... It's all right. It's just a leaf. So, that is pretty much it about these guys themselves. Of course, we're going to get on to comparisons right now. But as for these guys on their own, that's pretty much all I had to say. Ellie, I would put at about the 6 out of 10. Um, the accessories are pretty much the entire reason for all four of those points being missing because on, with, if, if she had good accessories or if this was just on her own this is what it is it's an improvement of the other figure it's more movie accurate it's more articulated it is exactly what you expect getting it so it does what it's doing perfectly it's the accessories that help justify the price that are absolutely boneheaded and i don't know who at mattel uh gave this idea I don't know who approved it. I don't know who should be out to stores, but those three people need to be fired, lost, gone, instantly banished. Because if they're making these, here we go again, shitty decisions, you don't need them around. Now, let's get on to comparisons. All right, starting us off with, um, you know, comparisons. Here is original Ellie. As you can see, everything on her is one piece, just molded together and painted. The face is really bad in comparison. Let me make sure this one's nice and visible so you guys do get a nice, honest look at the two. Here's what I meant by the meat shields on the legs. As you can see, a little bit of the flesh droops over to hide the actual joint. 
and it just doesn't look proper at all. Not to mention that the paint on the on the top of the thighs does not men, match the paint on the calves, whereas this is all seamless. So huge, huge improvement. Here is Alan. I cannot, for the life of me, find my Ian. I know, big sin. So we don't get the trio together quite yet, but I will definitely find it before the next Hammond Collection human review. And that is it for the human comparisons. We'll keep them on screen just for relevancy, just in case you do want to see the, the, the upcoming ones. Now it is turn, oof, my bad. Sorry, Ellie, you got tail whipped. Now it is time for the Lophosaurus to get his turn. And I do have quite a few. Starting us off with the main line, the Lophosaurus, so you can see just how much of an improvement this is. It not only is it much bigger, but it is obviously much better sculpted and much better painted. It is a direct comparison between the two. So you can just see how much they've truly improved the secret formula. Ellie is just a, 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 a goner at this point. How much they improved the figures. So huge, huge improvement. Now we're gonna take a look at something a little more of a blast from the past. Seeing I mentioned earlier in the video, the original spitter toy. Now, can you put this on? This is something I've been wanting to see for years. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it can be done. Look at that. You can absolutely take his frill and put it on the classic vintage Dilop Dilophosaurus spitter. And it still works. You can still squeeze it. Now it is a little loose. You may want to do something in there if you're going to play with it like this. Display-wise, it stands just fine. It does kind of hinder his his uh, balance because he wasn't made for this. So he will topple over. You'll need to stand him on something. But if you're playing, you may want to have something to fix it in there and spot. But it does fit. And it does look absolutely amazing. And I assume if you do it this way, you can just have this on there too. Da -da 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 -da. But mainly the frill is the important part. So that's really cool. And then we'll just compare them overall. So uh, I think they're around the same size overall, which is very cool. I like that. Kind of, kind of a neat little Easter egg that it can, it can, it is somewhat compatible with the old vintage spitter. And then here, of course, is the Amber Collection, the Lothosaurus. As you can see, the paint is far superior on this guy. Noticeably, the legs are a little more stumpy on this guy in proportion to his body than this one is. These ones are more like raptor legs, where these are really stumpy and short, and it almost looks like they're missing a piece in there. So that is an interesting note. Of course, no bendy wire tail on this guy. Actually, wait. No, there is. No, there is. There definitely is a bendy wire tail still. I don't know why I said that. The jaw is definitely improved. As you can see, this one had issues, known issues with the jaw not quite locking together fully. And uh, this guy has completely rectified that. So that looks really good. That's a definite improvement over the old one. I also think this one's face just looks a little bit better. Uh, this one just looks kind of bug-eyed and super wide and whatnot. And that's a problem on both sides. Whereas this one looks really sinister and like it's hunting. It's just such a better face mold and face paint and sculpt and everything. It's just a huge improvement. So, taking a look at other Hammond Collection dinosaurs. Here we have the Parasaurolophus. This guy's getting a little tough to stand. His ankles are not holding up all that wheel. So here is the, the, the Para with our new Dilophosaurus. More of the classic dinosaurs are coming through Hammond Collection and I cannot wait. I know we just got the concave editor uh, announced and revealed. Uh, really weird choice. Now, I, I'm not saying I dislike it because I like what it means. I just think it's a little early for him. There's so many other mainline movie dinosaurs. Yep, here comes T-Rex. Uh, there's so many other many, many more movie mainline dinosaurs that we could have gotten before the concave editor. But it's still a cool dinosaur, and what it means is that no dinosaur is truly off limits for Hammond Collection. 
I, I guess as long as it was even mentioned in the movie, it is valid for a entry, which is cool. That means once they do the limited amount of movie dinosaurs, it's not the end of the line and we can still get more. So anyway, here is the T-Rex and uh, yeah, of course it is dwarfed little guy. Here's Ellie with the Rex as well. So that is really all I had to say about this review. These two are great. Of course, I prefer the Dilophosaurus to Ellie. Ellie's just great to finish off the main trio, I guess, for Hammond Collection. Of course, we're getting more figures. We're getting uh, Ray soon. And I assume Hammond and uh, maybe even the... Actually, no, we did get the lawyer in a Comic-Con exclusive. So I don't have that. And I don't have it coming. And I don't know when I'm going to get it. So I wouldn't look out for that review anytime soon. That's going to be a tough acquire. But... For now, that is all I really had to say about these guys. Anyway, guys, that has been all for this review. I certainly hope you guys enjoyed. Um, tomorrow is my birthday, but you guys will still be getting another review. Yes, I turn 24 tomorrow. Happy birthday, Toy Adventures. Woohoo! Anyway, tomorrow's review is going to be of a, a birthday present. And I know, guys, I've all but abandoned the Halo reviews. I didn't get too many views, but this one's extra special and I definitely do want to cover it. So tomorrow, guys, for the birthday review, you guys are beginning a review of the brand new Jazzwares ODST Rookie with Drop Pod. This is absolutely mind blowing for me and I am ecstatic to get this in my hands and actually review it for you guys. And um, yeah, I just have so much to talk about. So many interesting figures to show on the back that I want to show you guys, but I'll talk about that in its review. It, it, it details the feature of the line that I'm super, the feature of this toy line that I am super, super excited for. So anyway, guys, that is it for this review. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for tomorrow's birthday review, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.